Well, hello again from Kingston, where I know it's become a bit of a cliche to say it's been a busy week. But if any week deserved that title, this one does. To find out why, keep watching. And don't forget at the end, if you can think of any ways to improve these updates, I'm always open to comments. Thanks for watching. See you later. We're going to start this week with an area that probably gets much less attention than it deserves. This is the business of removing the brackets that have supported the temporary guardrails during construction. About 73 on each side of the concrete spans. Extensive use is made of a crane and a special box allows ancillaries and other items to be lifted off. Work is currently taking place on span 12 and will continue for some time to come. It's easy to overlook as well the amount of effort that's going into removal of the temporary causeway. Trucks are rolling every day to carry gravel skimmed from the causeway. It will go on to be repurposed as the base for the large holding pond that is being built on what was the East Laydown below the Gore Road Library. While we're on the East End, let's look at the remarkable work done this week by the team from Black and MacDonald to complete traffic signal installation at the junction with points at Mark Drive. Installing traffic monitoring cameras involved extensive use of the bucket lift. But it did offer the crew some remarkable overviews of the project. Dylan would have noticed work progressing steadily to remove the massive stringers or beams that were major components of the temporary trestle roadway. Removal of the stringers, of course, enabled the removal then of the piles that had supported them. The fact that before every lift, the components affected require preparation should not be overlooked. Particular care has to be taken when attaching the massive vibrating hammer to the piles that are to be pulled. but it's particularly satisfying to see the waters dance around a pile as the hammer's vibrations assist its release. Removing components is one thing, disposing of them is something different. This week we saw stringers depart to storage and a cargo of steel piles depart for disposal. On Friday, it was time for 11 of the massive crane mats to depart for storage. In case you're wondering about the West End, Monday morning revealed this massive excavation and that some of the walls approaching the West Abutment had been poured and work was in hand to pour more. Remarkably, by Tuesday morning, the excavation had been filled and gravel trucks were arriving at the approach to the west abutment, where a bulldozer from Bar was grading it with a little bit of assistance wetting down from a Kiwit pickup. Tuesday and Wednesday, saw the welcome return of the crew from Sousa Ready Mix to pour curbs on the West End. And their work always involves high quality hand finishing. The West End wasn't the only place to receive concrete this week. After testing proved the concrete fit for purpose, 
fourth expansion joint on span 17 was poured on Monday afternoon. Concrete pours are always a team effort and require considerable concentration and skill. The ready mix trucks from CBN would roll again on Tuesday and Thursday to support wall pours on various sections of the bridge. Trailer repositioning on Friday suggests that changes are coming and the arrival of this machine that provides access under the bridge from the span is very interesting too. But let's go to wildlife with a look at the growing gap on the trestle roadway. Well, that puts another week to bed. Construction is going very well, the weather's been very kind, but we could all do with some rain. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.